This year has been one of the worst for Hollywood that we've seen in a long time. Aside from a few obvious standouts, nearly every big budget film has fallen flat on its face. Whether it was yet another tired Marvel film desperately trying to justify its existence, or one of the many reboots like Indiana Jones that failed to restart their franchise, it begs the question, why do so many modern movies suck? With their massive budgets, their thousand strong production crews, you'd expect the opposite. But over the past two decades, the quality of blockbuster movies has fallen off a cliff. So what went wrong? Well, well, this is a question that the big studios are asking themselves right now, as they're chucking endless amounts of cash at this problem. Modern movie budgets are the highest they've ever been. More and more money has been thrown at directors, letting them hire bigger actors, more writers, and leading to a revolution in visual effects. It seems like a simple fact that having more resources to realize your creative vision would make it better. But that's not the real reason studios have been doing this. Instead, as always, it's because of profits. Way back in 2009, as this trend for massive budgets was beginning to emerge, a research firm called SNL Kagan released a very interesting study looking at film budgets and how they relate to profits. By analyzing films released between 2004 and 2008, they found that breaching the $90 million mark for a film made it far more likely to do well at the box office. Mid-budget films on the other hand, despite only costing half as much to make, were far riskier. And there were a few reasons for this. With massive blockbusters, audiences knew they were going to see a big spectacle that was well worth the ticket fee. They also had enough of a marketing budget to make sure everybody knew about it. More as the studios probably weren't basing their decisions on this study alone, they were working with the same data. And so soon enough, the big five movie studios were focused almost solely on big budget films, whilst the flow of medium sized films has dried up. And this led to a few massive problems. You would think that more money would always help a film, but in the end, too many cooks spoil the broth. Only the most controlling and demanding directors could resist the opinions of so many different people trying to apply their own ideas to the movie. It was made way worse by the studios micromanaging every single aspect of the films to suit their focus groups, and so the creativity fell apart. And a final reason for the shift the spectacle was just that these kinds of films play way better to now massive Chinese audiences. Cold, the loss of the mid-budget films was just as bad, if it's just one big CGI fight anyway. But this isn't true for lower budget films with more than a few pages of dialogue that aren't just witty quips. Tons of the best movies of the past few decades like The Truman Show, Good Will Hunting, or The Shawshank Redemption came from small to medium budgets. For every $200 million reboot or sequel, we lose 10 potential masterpieces. And despite seemingly having more limitations, mid-sized films have so much more freedom to actually explore something new and bold. One director and a small team of writers working with actors who are trying to prove themselves can make a much more cohesive product than 100 writers and 10,000 CGI artists. People new to the business used to be able to move their careers forward with these films. They gave new actors as writers and directors a chance to make a name for themselves. Today, these ideas are pushed into Netflix shows instead, which pad out their stories into multiple seasons and lose all the impact a simple 90-minute film would have had. Today, we're seeing the results of the shift. People have gotten tired of the green screen spectacle. It simply isn't enough to guarantee profits. And you can tell the studios have been getting nervous about this for a while. It's why they've been relying more and more on reboots and sequels. As long as a franchise was successful once, they'll be happy to dig up its corpse and tell the same story again. And this trend of studios relying more and more on sequels and reboots has become ever more prominent over the last couple of decades, driven largely by the commercial appeal of capitalizing on established franchises, which comes with a ready-made audience and hence a lower financial risk. However, this approach has led to what we see today, the most boring, mundane, mind-numbing movies made to make a profit. But before we continue, I want to talk about a video sponsor. Have you ever Googled yourself and were shocked to see your personal information exposed in one of those public listing sites? Data brokers are making a fortune selling your information to robocallers, spammers, and others who want to learn more about you, like where you live. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Aura. Aura can identify data brokers exposing your info and submit opt-out requests on your behalf. Now, brokers are legally required to remove your info if you ask them to, but if they make it super hard to do, let Aura handle it for you. And you can try Aura for free for two weeks using my link. Aura also does so much to protect you and your family from online threats you can't see. It's super easy to set up and you don't have to download several different apps to get things like parental controls, antivirus, VPN, password management, identity theft insurance, and more. Instead, you get everything in one at an affordable price. So let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online so that you can focus on other tasks with peace of mind. You can either let people continue to exploit and profit off your private information, or you can go to aura.com forward slash moon to start your two-week free trial. Also link down in the description below.
You see, back a few decades ago, the success of original films often lied in the novelty, the fresh narrative, and unique storytelling techniques they bring to the table. Original films had the liberty to explore uncharted territories with narrative themes, character dynamics, and visual storytelling, which often resonates with audiences seeking new experiences and messages, creating intrigue, engagement, allowing a deeper connection to the narrative and the characters within it. On the other hand, the mass production of sequels and reboots just cheapens this connection, rehashing the same old themes time and time again, without ever advancing the narrative of a character arcs, which can lead to a very stale viewing experience. And this is coming from these big studios' desire to play it safe and cater to established fan bases while pandering to political narratives. I just mean that it's no longer 1937, and we absolutely wrote a Snow White that she's is not going to be yeah, saved by the prince. She's not going to be saved by the prince, and she's not going to be dreaming about true love. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be. And we can see this with the most recent sequels, Indiana Jones, for example. The original trilogy was lauded for the thrilling adventure and the charismatic performance of Harrison Ford, creating a balance between action, humor, and storytelling, making you want to explore the world, see new things, touching the hearts and minds of generations around the world. And then you compare these groundbreaking films to the most recent Indiana Jones films, and you can see this huge difference. All the new Indiana Jones films lacks any actual storytelling. Harrison Ford's old and tired, he doesn't care about the movies anymore. It feels forced and out of place, and the over-reliance on CGI, as opposed to practical effects, makes this whole thing feel like child's play. Another example is The Thing. The original Thing was groundbreaking in its use of practical effects to create a sense of horror and intrigue. The tight, suspenseful narrative, coupled with the claustrophobic setting and the psychological tension among the characters made it a horror classic. Its innovative portrayal of an alien entity and the underlying theme of paranoia stuck with audiences for years, whereas the most recent The Thing was just a complete failure. There was hardly any dread or suspense, again over-relying on CGI over practical effects, with an incredibly bland story rendering this film just a hollow cash cow. And of course, not to mention Star Wars. The original Star Wars films were groundbreaking, amazing character development, extremely interesting adventures, huge innovation, groundbreaking special effects, setting a huge precedent in Hollywood, changing the entire movie industry, and yet the most recent Disney woke flops over rely on boring CGI, boring scripts, inconsistent character arcs, and hollow virtue signaling pandering, just like Ghostbusters, where the original film was watched for decades, and yet the reboots are just feminist garbage, completely flopping at the box office, just trying to rely on the nostalgia of the past, whilst ruining the reputation of the original Ghostbusters movie. But it's not just reboots that's destroying modern movie making. One huge aspect is the shift in audience attention spans, which has been decimated by social media platforms and technology. Hardly any audiences today could ever sit through a movie from the 60s. It'd be almost impossible to get through for most people, where dialogue was the driving force of storytelling. But these long slow burning movies with intriguing dialogue was what made the message of the film so powerful. But now today, movie studios are just bidding to cater to the lowest common denominator. The TikTok subway surfers crowd making movies as fast-paced as possible, often at the expense of storytelling depth, character motivations, overall messaging, and nuanced unfolding of the plot. It's this fast-paced, fast-food-style movies that's making the message of these movies so watered down. Martin Scorsese, one of the greatest directors in history, claimed that these modern movies are like theme park rides when he referred to Marvel films rather than traditional cinema. Encapsulating this broader industry sentiment, as Scorsese's comments hit at a concerning point that the essence of cinema is being overshadowed by a pursuit of adrenaline-fueled spectacles, nothing else. Explosions over meaning, doing everything they can to maximize the dopamine in their audience over life-changing messages. And it's this shift in narrative focus and storytelling pace that's emblematic of a larger trend about the commercialization of the cinematic space. And it's this tilt towards high-octane action and fast pacing for a mind-numb consumer jellyfish audience marks this dystopian trend of pandering to the dumbest and among us, ultimately driven by the greed of a monopolized Hollywood industry. But is it really just this move to action-packed, watered-down remakes that makes modern movies so bad? If only. The ideological infringement of modern movies is one of the key drivers ruining modern movies today. And we see this everywhere with the hollow cliche of the strong female character. The term strong female character has become ubiquitous in the entertainment industry, used by writers, actors, directors, and marketing departments alike. However, its overuse has rendered it meaningless and so corporate, transforming it into a mere buzzword devoid of substance. In fact, Emily Blunt, a renowned female actress, actually expressed a disdain for this term, highlighting how it often results in stoic, unrelatable characters that are just so boring to watch, and you just need to look at the Marvels to see what she means. The strong female character in all modern movies is presented as supremely competent, rarely facing any actual challenges or setbacks, and almost never allowed to fail. It's just an excuse for movie studios to virtue signal for ESG points, to get more investment money from the big names like BlackRock, and make their brand look squeaky clean. 
completely ignoring the fact that nobody wants to watch it. And why would they? Strong female characters are often depicted as having everything they need to succeed from the outset, requiring the world to change around them rather than undergoing personal development, which not only sends an unrealistic message to audiences, but also results in poor writing. Characters like Captain Marvel, who achieve their full potential by simply casting off external limitations, exemplifies this trend, leaving audiences with very little to empathize with, as the character's victory is always assured from the beginning. But that's not the only thing that's unrealistic. Female characters are always physically equal to their male counterparts in movies, which results in these unbelievable and kind of cringeworthy fight scenes, where nobody even believes what they're watching. And this focus on physical strength as a measure of a character's worth is not only unrealistic, but also misses the point of what truly makes a character strong. True strength lies in this character's resilience, bravery, and determination, not their physical prowess. Just look at films like The Truman Show, or characters like Irwin from Lord of the Rings, who stands up to formidable enemies despite being physically outmatched. And by ignoring this, these main roles are completely stripped of their emotional complexity and vulnerability, completely devoid of any actual femininity, making these movies completely inauthentic and just unwatchable. Audiences can sense that something is amiss, and that's why everybody hates these modern movies. And in reverse, male characters that were once depicted as stoic, reserved, and emotionally controlled have now transformed into emotional crybabies, lacking any self-assurance. And this not only deviates from realistic male behavior, but also completely diminishes the appeal of male characters, making them less relatable and aspirational, all in the name of their woke ideology, deconstructing once revered male heroes into shadows of their former selves, all for the benefit of a select few investment firms, with iconic characters like Luke Skywalker and Rocky being stripped of their heroic qualities, leaving audiences with a tainted legacy, reflecting the trend of Hollywood's deliberately attempt to undermine positive male role models, eroding the admiration and inspiration they once provided, and instead serving them a cold-hearted, plastic, fake, warped vision of the world. And that's why everywhere today, you see this constant trope of comically brain-dead characters, of easily outwitted and provoked men, with the underlying message being clear. Men are dumb, and their accomplishments are unearned, necessitating the intervention of smarter, stronger female characters to set things straight. And this all contributes to a broader pattern of ideological infringement in modern blockbusters, where the agenda takes precedence over storytelling and character development, and the result is a generation of movies that lack genuine diversity and character portrayal, opting instead for shallow, one-dimensional representations of gender, not only undermining the complexity of real human behavior, but also diminishing the overall quality of cinema as a whole. But it's not just the characters, it's also the actors playing these people. Celebrities that were once seen as glamorous, refined, and untouchable now just seem like completely out of touch, outdated, and deeply insecure people. No one really admires the celebrities playing these characters anymore, as social media has provided celebrities with a direct line of communication to their fans, and the results are ugly. And one of the main glimpses of this was with the Imagine song during COVID. Imagine there's no heaven. With videos like this exposing the complete detachment of these celebrities to the regular people, revealing their lack of knowledge and understanding on so many issues, being more just puppets for the studio's political messages. And this decline of the celebrity mystique and the exposure of their ignorance goes way beyond just social media, as in Hollywood, the ideological infringement and push for political correctness has led to a stark decline in storytelling quality and character development. Even South Park is now calling them out for it, because the focus on agenda-driven narratives and one-dimensional character portrayals is just leaving audiences deeply unhappy with what they watch. It's only kid films that really take off anymore. Anything else made by Disney or Marvel just seems to constantly bomb at the box office because nobody cares to see these films anymore. However, all of these issues have been catalyzed by the prevalence of poor writing in Hollywood. You see, the narrative stakes in cinema's past were palpable. Death was irreversible, villains were menacing, and the hero's journey was a narrative compass. But today, Hollywood suffers from terrible writing that undermines these elements. And one of the worst examples of this is the writing in the MCU, which has made death completely lose its finality. For example, example, in Avengers Endgame, time travelers are used to reverse fatal events from the Avengers Infinity War movie, effectively nullifying the impact of character deaths that struck the emotional chord of its audience, completely watering down the story. And similarly, concepts like the multiverse, as seen in Spider-Man No Way Home, introduces alternate realities where deceased characters live, which completely diminishes the significance of their deaths in the first place, as now there's nothing to worry about, as they can just be in another universe elsewhere. But it's not just death. Recent portrayals of villains, such as Steppenwolf in the initial release of Justice League, illustrates a huge lack of depth and genuine threat. In contrast, villains like Darth Vader from Star Wars and Hannibal Lecter in The Silence of the Lambs were once sources of profound fear and presented significant challenges to the protagonists. But modern villains today in Hollywood often lack the complexity and menace that make them compelling adversaries. And this is all part of the destruction of the hero's journey, which was first conceptualized by Joseph Campbell, and is the narrative archetype that has outlined the best story's protagonist's adventures and personal transformations. It's a structure that's resonated through centuries of storytelling, from ancient myths to modern 
and cinema. However, it's only up until now that recent films have neglected this time-tested blueprint, leading to these stories that always feel disjointed and so unsatisfying as a viewer. Take for example the Star Wars sequel trilogy. The Force Awakens introduced Rey, a character with mysterious origins and untapped potential, seemingly setting up a classic serial journey. However, as the trilogy progressed, particularly in The Last Jedi, there was a notable departure from this path. Rey's rapid acquisition of skills without traditional trials and mentorship typically seen in the hero's journey left little room for character development or even audience connection, and it's this lack of a clear, coherent path of growth for Rey that resulted in a huge missed opportunity to showcase a transformative and inspiring hero's journey. But it isn't just Star Wars and the MCU. Another example of this is the Fantastic Beast series, a prequel to the beloved Harry Potter saga. New Sacamander's character, while endearing, never follows a clear hero's journey either. Unlike Harry Potter, the film is more focused on world building and setting up future plot lines than on Newt's personal growth and the challenges he must overcome. And so it just feels aimless when you watch it, and there's no strong emotional core, it's simply a cash grab. And you can really see this when you compare it to great stories like Lord of the Rings, where Frodo Baggins' journey is a textbook example of Campbell's structure, as we follow Frodo's reluctant step into adventure, the trials he faces, the allies he gains, and his ultimate transformation are all classic elements that engage the audience deeply because you can connect with his character. His journey is fought with peril and each victory is hard won, making his character's growth and the story's resolution profoundly satisfying. The disregard for the hero's journey in Hollywood can lead to characters who seem to lead from point A to point B without the audience witnessing the crucial internal and external battles that define a hero. And so, these stories always lack any depth and fail to resonate with an audience on a personal level. And where storytelling and character development are already compromised by poor writing and ideological agendas, the issue of actor selection further complicates the cinematic landscape, as nepotism is rife in Hollywood. The children of established stars like Jaden Smith and Lily Rose Depp often find red carpets rolled out before them, not solely by virtue of their talent, but also their lineage. And this isn't to discredit their abilities or successes, but to highlight a skewed playing field in the Hollywood arena. And it has many consequences. Firstly, it always leads to the same sort of casting in these movies, where the same archetypes are perpetuated by similar kinds of actors, which always limits the richness of on-screen representation. Because when roles are inherited rather than earned, the resulting performances lack the depth that comes from a diverse array of life experiences and the hunger that drives a self-made actor to delve deeply into their craft. And with the increasing budgets of these huge blockbuster movies, and a continual decline in medium budget films and small budget films, Hollywood's creating an environment where the stakes are so high that the producers have to gravitate towards safe choices, which means always using the same established names or those with industry connections, completely stifling the emergence of new talent and ultimately leading to a stagnation of creativity. And then the actors who do secure these roles in these high budget movies consistently over time become complacent, their performances lack the raw edge and fever and dedication that often characterizes those who are still seeking to prove themselves. And the narrowing of the talent pool has a ripple effect on the industry as a whole, leading to certain predictability in performances and a lack of authenticity that audiences perhaps even unconsciously can detect. That's why more and more people just don't care about movies that much anymore, and if they do, they usually don't take away any greater message from the film, completely stifling the future of Hollywood. Something has to change here. How many more flops do the studios need to understand that radical change is needed in Hollywood? Only time will tell.